Thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading in the book of Job, chapter 37. And I was just, when I was going through this chapter this morning, I came to verses like verse 5 and verse 23, where Elihu is speaking, and he is bringing some truth out here, where God's ways are unsearchable. Today I wanted to speak about the, unsover the sovereignty of God, how God is unsearchable. Psalm 115, verse 3 tells us that God is in heaven, and he does whatever pleases him. He is God. He is sovereign. Now, in the light of the uh, school shooting in Ovalde, Texas, a couple of days ago, many people will often ask, where was God when this happened? Well, the Bible tells us in Scripture, in certain verses like Isaiah chapter 45, 45 verse 7, that God is in control of even these wicked acts that happen. He's not the cause the cause of these actions is the evil of man, but God is ultimately sovereign. But God is working everything out according to his plan and purpose. I don't understand everything about God. His ways are unsearchable. In, in Job chapter 37, as we read this chapter, it speaks of how God is in control of the weather. In 2008, Vice President Al Gore, former Vice President Al Gore, wrote a book made a movie about global warming and said that we would be underwater by the year 2015 in America, in the world. Well, seven years later, I am now walking in a wooded area not too far from my house on dry ground. God is ultimately in control of the weather. We don't understand the weather patterns. Sometimes weathermen can make predictions about what's going to happen and it doesn't come to happen. Sometimes it does. But ultimately, it's God who's in control of the weather. Now that the global warming situation has resided and people made their money, the narrative changes now to climate change. And you have people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a congresswoman, now saying that the world will be burned with fire within 10 years if we don't listen to her and her plan. So people can make more money. Ultimately, God is in control, my friends. God is in control of catastrophes that happened yet a couple of days ago in Texas. We don't understand everything about God. That's because he is God. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9 tells us that his ways and his thoughts are much higher than ours. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 tells us that the secret things belong to the Lord. My friends, we can't comprehend God's sovereignty. But one thing we can be is joyful worship the lord be honoring to him for saving us in ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 and 5 it tells us that god chose us before the foundation of the world genesis chapter 17 verse 7 tells us that god made a covenant an oath with a certain people the jews that he would keep as we read in deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 7 and 8 the scriptures tell us that god chose the jewish people not because they were more numerous or greater than any other nation, but simply because God chose them. He made a covenant with them to love them. It was his prerogative. It was his choice. And he will keep it. In the New Testament, Christ himself, our dear Lord and Savior, told us in John chapter 15, verse 16, about his disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And he chose us. He chose his disciples to bear fruit. One of the ways we can bear fruit is by honoring the name of the Lord, as Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 11 tells us. One of the ways we bear fruit is by worshiping God in awe and reverence and respect for who he is, as Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 tells us. My friends, we live in very difficult times. The Bible told us these days would come. There's nothing new under the sun. As you often hear me quote Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9, What's going on today has been going on since the beginning of time. It's just vamping up more and more. Murder and violence has been on the earth in the days of Noah, as we read in Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. Even before that, we know the uh, first two children that our parents had, our first parents had, Adam and Eve. Uh, one killed the other. Cain killed his brother Abel in Genesis chapter 4. Um, perversion, sexual perversion, we read in Genesis chapter 17 and 18 about Sodom and Gomorrah. My friends, nothing is new under the sun. Things are going to get worse. 
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, Peter, when you read the New Testament, speak of the end times, whenever passages of Scripture talk about the end times, things are going to get worse and worse. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We have to remember Scripture verses, memorize the Word of God, like Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, Romans chapter 8, verses 37 to 39. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. We're more than conquerors in Christ. My friends, we need to look to the Lord. Keep your mind focused on things above. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Read Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. That chapter, of, the first chapter in the Psalms, chapter 1. There's only six verses. But so much power is in that chapter about how the blessed person is the one who meditates on the word of God. They will be planted as trees by living waters. They're going to grow, develop fruit more and more in their lives. You'll have inexpressible joy when you come to the Lord, despite everything that's going on outwardly. My friends, I would like to end with this. We also have the need to learn to love others, be compassionate to others. As I was coming out here to do this devotional video just a little while ago, a young man in my neighborhood, he dropped something on the floor going to his car and he cursed. He said a bad word. Now, if you didn't know this kid, you would say, wow, what a nasty mouth. But I know his mother. His mother works with me in the school system and she's terminally ill with cancer. You see, you don't know what other people are going through in life. You see, we look at the outward appearance. We look at the outward, but God sees the heart. God looks at the heart and what people are going through. No justifying what people say. There's no justifying sins in other people's lives. But let God be the judge. Let God be the one who uh, condemns them. Let us pray for others. Let us pray that others would have a clear conscience before God. You know, in Acts chapter 23, verse 1, the Apostle Paul spoke about how he had a clear conscience in what he was doing as unto the Lord. Pray that people would have a clear conscience towards God. Be a vessel of light. Be a vessel of love. Yes, we are to try to expose the evil in other people's lives, as Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 tells us. But do it in love. You don't know what others are going through. We're so quick, and I know I'm guilty of this at my, sometimes myself, so quick to judge others by their outward actions, but you just don't know what other people are going through in their life. And I hope today's devotional video will encourage us all, my friends, to be strong in the Lord, be sympathetic towards others, Understanding that God is in control, despite everything going on in the world, he ultimately has the final say, and we are safe in his arms through Christ, his Son, our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ. We'll see this devotional video this morning, today on social media, Lord God. Help us to remember that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, as Romans chapter 8, verse 1 tells us. For those who walk not according to their flesh, but according to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all, my friends.